Welcome to season 2 of the Adri podcast. And in this episode, we have one engineer from Grow, a growth stage company, and another engineer from Adri, which is an early stage company. Given the kind of companies which are working in right now, what do you think will AI replace you? Which famous Indian product you hate the most? Unpopular opinion. Biggest time waster in your uh, company or in your work? The ad hoc tasks. Like like doing this podcast. Like like do, <laughs> doing this podcast. Akash here is from Grow. Akash, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, my name is Akash, and I'm at Grow from last five years almost. Okay. I'm a backend engineer and I used to take care of all the payments related thing in Grow. So everything you see in the you know in Grow app related to payments, mandates, presentations, accounting and all all those things are built by me and my team. So that's what we do at Grow and right now I'm actually leading a team of almost 20 folks. Okay, great. You have been there for 5 years. Almost 5 years. Great. Okay. Suresh, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, so I'm Suresh Thakur. I've been working as a product engineer at AirDrive for around uh, two and a half years now i joined when i was probably the sixth employee i guess mm-hmm. and yeah now the uh, company is still in early stage but we have grown from that time so most of my job uh, entails uh, looking towards the back end system of the product and and yeah again in general anything related to software okay great now let's talk about the hiring process just to give an idea to the audience that uh, how these two companies are hiring and um how the hiring process is looking like right now uh, suresh why don't you go ahead and share what's the hiring process at atri right now yeah so uh, a hiring process whenever some candidate apply the first thing is we have an intro call where we try to understand their background mm-hmm. uh, whatever tech stack they have worked upon uh, the next is an assignment round okay so uh, we provide them with an assignment that is somewhat on a similar tech stack they would be working on in the company okay uh once that is done and it's get reviewed the next round is a coding round where we take assignments as a base and try to build something on top of it okay so uh maybe a new future uh, feature to the assignment mm-hmm. so that we can see how they tackle the problem more of a live coding yeah more of a live coding okay uh also a uh, bit technology specific questions if it's for back end then bit of sql bit of node js and you know a, a technology specific questions okay but yeah after all these parts are done then there's a culture fit round mm-hmm. and that's that's the last part then we onboard them to the team okay so no dsa related rounds is it no dsa related rounds yes uh, okay that's interesting yeah. uh, what about you akash So for us we means from engineering perspective we have different roles and SD 1 2 3 4 and for all of them there are slightly different differentiating in the you know uh, kind of interview we took for them mm-hmm. for SD 1 it generally consists of PhDs and coding okay and uh, and after that again hiring manager round and for SD 2 it's you know PhDs coding and HLD after that hiring manager round for SD 3 is again it is similar to SD 2 for sd4 it will be psds hld lld and coding and after that you know uh, hiring pro- hiring manager round after that again the hiring managers will also check for you know the cultural fit and all and after mm. that only they will get onboarded okay so the psds round is uh, dsa yes, right yes dsa okay any particular reason for you guys having dsa round yeah so what we feel and uh, our whole engineering team feels like you know uh, problem solving is a skill which we need right now because the scale we are at right now we have the luxury to train the folks in the tech stack which we are working right now okay. but it will be very you know uh, um, uh, required skill set i uh, i believe for our use cases that he should have a very good problem solving skills mm-hmm. so with psds means problem solving and data structures round we usually verify whether the you know uh, the candidate is good in problem solving or not and okay. our again the psds is not like you know the peculiar or lead typical code. you know lead code questions is more around the logic of the you know logical questions how logical the candidate is and whether he is able to solve that problem with logic or not understood okay got it because what suresh mentioned is uh, their interview process is dependent on a framework or a language in our company uh, but uh, how is the scene at uh, grow so we 
actually don't care for ki what programming language he has worked before mm-hmm. because what we believe learning a programming programming language will be a month of task okay. and we already have a so we generally work on java and spring boot so most of, th- of our services are on java and spring boot and most of the th- things we have already created okay. so if anyone is coming in it will be very easy for them to go into you know look into lot of things a lot of code and learn from there okay. so we generally look for you know folks who are able to write code for a problem to solve them right so it it it's actually neutral of programming languages and frameworks got it okay uh thanks for sharing that now let's talk about product managers okay i'm sure grow has grown a lot and uh, there are roughly about 1200 odd employees right now yeah um and uh, there there will be pms in the team right yeah do you think they add any value uh in the company hmm so actually it depends where the company right now stands or at which position the company is right now mm-hmm. what i believe so when i have joined it is around 120 folks were there only 30 folks were there in engineering and we didn't have any pms at that time because okay. we knew what we want to build for the base product right so when you know what you want to build for the base of your product I guess at that point of time you don't need any PMs because you want to move fast, right? Hmm. And so you're saying that PMs will slow down. Slow down from that perspective because they ha- have to go through a lot of user research, right? And to g- so once a product is built, you have to, you know, improve the product, right? Mm-hmm. So to improve the product, you have to analyze what user wants. It's not like what you want to add to the product, right? Okay. So to do that analysis and you know what user wants. what will be the market fit of the new feature to do that they do lot of analysis and you know write all the use cases for us so it slows down the process but actually it helps the product to you know be a better user centric product okay got it and airtrip doesn't have any pms obviously um do you think we need one um not really actually if you uh, if i'm being honest uh, what i feel like is uh engineer should be closer to or whoever is uh, you know creating a product should be closer to the users mm-hmm. so uh, in an ideal scenario uh, engineer should be talking to their users should be getting the uh, you know whatever the uh, pain points they are facing whatever the features they want to build and uh, gather all that data and then decide on their own rather than you know have an abstraction layer between the developers and users and then someone is uh taking user interview and uh kind of communicating it to the engineers and that might in, uh, introduce a personal bias to uh, as well mm-hmm. so it's better if we remove the you know uh we bring the developers more closer to the user rather than have layers between them okay did you just reduce product managers to an abstraction layer <laughs> <laughs> i mean if if uh, if we look at it in a way it is kind of <laughs> okay moving on this is hot topic in the industry around ai and everybody is talking about that hey will ai replace this or will ai replace that uh, or will ai replace engineers and all those things i want to know from both of you given the kind of companies which are working in right now what do you think will ai replace you at this point of time the kind of work i am doing uh, ai will not be able to replace me cause i do take decisions for the future for the betterment of the product right what the kind of problem solving skills i have the type of you know situation i am in right now and what kind of decisions i need, have to make i have to make on the decision of and i have to make the decision based on the events which are happening around me so mm-hmm. again do all those things ai will not be able to track you know at life point of time right so that's right. a kind of a human tendency there are emotions coming in so you have to take care of all those things so from that perspective i don't feel like ai will be able, able to you know replace me okay so you think that there is uh, obviously one important part is decision making yeah. and there is lot of context required for every single decision you are taking it yeah. can be anything around tech or product or team management or any anything anything else as well right yeah. uh, and you think that because that context is not there uh those kind of task ai won't be able to do right now yeah what what do you think suresh will ai replace you in a tribe i don't think so uh not uh, you know anytime uh, soon anytime soon at least it's not it's not happening uh it it might change the way uh, i develop stuff 
uh, it might change the coding pattern mm-hmm. uh, but even let's say the whole coding part was automated by ai but still you need an input right hmm. you need instructions and uh, what we say today a coding is what i write in an id is also an instruction so as an engineer i'm al- already skilled in providing instruction be it today uh, as as a you know today i'm providing it in an id i might provide it to an ai agent okay. uh, but the core skill set of uh, having a right context and providing the right instruction would always be there with me it's just that you know the development process might change uh, there might be an ai layer between uh, actual code the coding itself becomes human language mm-hmm. uh, but but still you'll need a person to provide right instructions uh, and with all the context that's an interesting perspective now i want you guys to answer this question carefully uh and suresh you can start what are the pros and cons of working in your company okay uh the pro is although me being a product developer or a software engineer i get to work on uh skills that are no way related to software be it you know uh, i get to at least learn from the marketing team because i work very closely with them they are right across me so uh you know i i kind of give my input sometimes there uh same with you know uh, design team branding team even uh, video team so mm. a lot of learning happens that are outside of software okay so that is probably the best part it as a person it uh, helps me to grow a lot in multi dimension way mm. uh the con would be uh, so as an engineer you kind of want to work at a depth uh, of a problem so uh, if if you know company is not at a scale the problems don't have much depth to it mm. so uh, for example let's say we are building a payment system so a uh, early stage startup building a payment system would be you know just integrating it with a stripe or something you don't mm. kind of care about a lot of edge cases or uh, up time or uh, you know if if it will be able to handle millions of transactions at a second or something uh, but uh if if let's say i was working at a company like uh swiggy. yeah swiggy or something so then uh i would be working on if if i would be working on uh, transactions then these problems that arrives only at the scale mm. would be something i would have learned uh but kind of you hope on you latch on to a company early and you hope you know it reaches to a scale where you kind of see the whole journey right from yeah. start to the end so yeah okay so i think not getting a chance to work on um very deep technical problems uh, specifically when you are working in an early stage company that might be a con right yeah what about you akash i'm sure the scale problem is not there at crew right now so so from pros wise you know you will have a lot of responsibility you know ownership you will be having a lot of scale to work on the things right and obviously you will be able to interact with business and you know learn from or you know get the understanding of the whole journey of a payment right Correct. starting from a uh, source to destination how everything is working mm-hmm. and all the nitty gritties of payments right cons will be as we are a you know fintech company uh, we are regulated by npci we are regulated by sebi and all those things comes very ad- abruptly and whenever it comes up you have to be on your toes and get to all the audit, audit things done that can be a little bit of hecty and cumbersome at times so yeah folks who don't like that kind of a pressure it will be you know little bit tough for them but we enjoy that work so yeah that is interesting because uh, the rbi mandates and uh, things i think compliance part and all that that's not really like sometimes it might be a technical problem statement but yeah. most of, of the times, time it's a business problem yeah and like probably not so exciting yeah. work it's there. just like things i have to do and i need to do for the product right to get the business running as usual so that the user doesn't face any issues that our product is getting banned for some time just like you know okay. which is what happens. we are being paid yep. for uh, yep. anyway <laughs> yeah that's a part of work <laughs> yes now we'll move on to our rapid fire round in this round i'm going to ask them a question and they'll either answer in a one word or if explanation is required they'll give one line of explanation but no time to think about it okay uh cool let's start uh maybe 
like you know for the first question you will answer first and uh, so for all even questions you will answer first for all odd questions you will answer first okay okay cool if you could delete one programming language from existence which would it be and why c sharp because we already have java maybe javascript cuz you know it's totally very ambiguous for me and it is very loosely coupled and that doesn't make sense for me so yeah okay most overrated thing in tech it can be anything a framework language pattern anything or okay uh, i guess it will be microservices cuz people get into that doesn't knowing about it ki whether they need it or not so maybe a trap to get into the microservice architecture very quickly okay yeah. fresh i mean i would say next js everyone getting into web dev without even giving a second thought starts with uh, react next js project because uh, again a full stack pro- when you talk about full stack project i think every beginner thinks of a next js project so next js okay biggest time waster in your uh, company or in your work i mean the ad hoc tasks that you get that that is apart from you know uh, tech or apart from product like like doing uh, this podcast like like do, <laughs> doing this podcast or so reviewing something some content so so yeah i think that that would be it okay fair enough akash for my case mostly the useless meetings i go into with you know uh, and doesn't have anything to share they just be there to have me just to be a listener there so yeah okay uh, most expensive tech gadget you own other than your phone and uh, laptop Hmm so I have bought a robot which actually cleans my house so yeah <laughs> that will be the one Okay that's an interesting one uh, Suresh Okay uh, my keyboard is really absurd uh, and compared to other keyboard it's expensive too so I have a 60% uh, ducky keyboard what is 60% keyboard so it doesn't have numpad doesn't have arrow key it just have letters and a number bar Okay, uh, and why would you why would you use that and not use a longer keyboard? Uh, it it looked cool. Then I bought it, and after a day, I realized I need uh, number at least arrow keys. Uh-huh. So I mapped the already existing keys. Let let's say Control Shift and uh, Alt into arrow keys. Uh, so <laughs> one side. So they are not in <laughs> not in this line also, right? And no, I mean uh, you get used to it with time is what I would say. But but There's yeah, no other option. <laughs> yeah, it's absurd. But but yeah, the keyboard still I I like that keyboard. And you have paid for it, so you better like <laughs> yeah. it now. Uh, what are you doing when you are not coding? Most probably watching some random documentary on Netflix. Okay, Akash. For me, it's outdoor games and uh, you know playing Counter Strike. Yeah. Okay, you still play games, is it? Yeah. Nice. Which famous Indian product you hate the most? unpopular opinion cred <laughs> that, that's pretty popular opinion i guess uh suresh so uh, i think i don't like ola okay <laughs> when uh, if if i'm trying to book a cab i don't need to order from ondc i don't need to buy a, a scooter <laughs> just book my cab please <laughs> and it, it doesn't even do, does that in bangalore specifically so so yeah ola now the latest thing has been krutrim also right <laughs> yeah i mean I get that you are trying to build a lot of products but please don't try to sell it when I'm trying to book my cab. Um if you could swap a role with other team member who would that be? I want to be a PM so just to see you know why they take so much time to write the PRDs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. I mean I w- I would probably swap my role with the uh, founders themselves. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I need to be careful now. <laughs> I feel like that that's what's next for me. <laughs> Good one. Okay. Okay, that's about it on this podcast. Thanks a lot Akash and Suresh for joining us. And with that we come to the end of this Airtrack podcast. We'll see you in the next one.